All right, going to show you that Watchman D, just like all baptismal regeneration pagan heretics, are just a bunch of scripture twisting devils, and they always have the rift scripture out of context. And people say, well, why are you going back on Watchman D? Because the guy is a lost papist, okay? And people may get offended over me going after Watchman D. Um, let me just say this. The discussion that I have with Watchman D, I was wrong to do that. The reason why is because nowhere in scripture are we told to have discussions or friendly chit chats with the lost hellbound heretics like a Watchman D. Okay, Galatians chapter 1 verses 6 through 9 says, let him be accursed. Okay, we're to let him, if he preaches a false gospel, which he does, he preaches the pagan practice of baptismal, re, baptismal regeneration, the Luciferian heresy of sinless perfectionism, and the Catholic Calvinist heresy of conditional security. He preaches a false gospel, and Galatians 1, 6-9 says, let him be accursed, not have a friendly chit-chat with him. So I was wrong to have a chit-chat with Watchman D. He's a lost heretic, I should have just let him be accursed. But I was giving in some peer pressure because I was sort of being pressured to have a discussion with them, so I did it to satisfy some people, some of my friends, but I was in sin for doing so. Okay, I should have just followed the scriptures and just let him be accursed. And Romans 16, 17, 18, mark and avoid them. You know, nowhere in scripture are we told to have discussions with lost heretics. We're told to mark them, avoid them, and let it be accursed if they preach a false gospel. But uh, Watchman D preaches the Catholic pagan heresy of baptismal regeneration. And I have shown in the past video that baptismal regeneration is a pagan doctrine. It's a pagan practice. And baptismal regeneration relies on being a scripture twisting devil. And Watchman D, he's a scripture twisting devil. He contorts and twists the scriptures to teach his pagan Catholic heresy of baptismal regeneration. So I'm going to cover some of those scriptures right now that him and other baptismal regeneration pagans like to twist. So the most common one, or a couple of common ones are here, one of them being John chapter 3 in verse 5. And they rip this totally out of context. Just like all uh, scripture twisting devils, Watchman D rips this out of context. Why? Because he's a scripture twisting devil. He's of his father Satan. He's twisting the scriptures just like Satan did in Matthew chapter 4. And yeah, I am being harsh because again, let him be accursed. Galatians 1 8 through 9. Paul used strong language. Peter used strong language in 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 1 to 3. Okay? There's nothing scripturally wrong with rebuking, sharply rebuking a false gospel teacher. Nothing scripturally wrong with that. And, and for, to, the, to the brethren who, say, who try to act like I'm wrong for doing so, they got some carnality issues. Because there's nothing wrong with rebuking a false prophet. We're commanded to mark them and avoid them and, and warn others, actively warn against them. Like Paul did in Acts chapter 20 verses, I believe verse 28 to 31. He says he warned day and night about wolves that would creep into the flock. But anyway, he, uh, one of the scriptures he'd like to use is John chapter 3 verse 5, and they rip this totally out of context. Because again, Watchman D is a scripture twisting devil. He's of his father Satan. Uh, so it says, John chapter 3 verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, and of the spirit he cannot enter in the kingdom of God. Now, Watchman, Watchman D, he basically thinks that born of water is referring to baptism. But he adds to the scriptures. Nowhere is the baptism in this verse or anywhere. Nowhere is baptism mentioned in this verse or anywhere in the context. He's adding the scripture just like any child of Satan would. Um, let me show you something very interesting about the context of what's going on here. John chapter 3 verse 3 down to verse 8. The full context. Because again, baptism, regeneration, pagan, heretics like Watchman D have the base their doctrines off ripping scripture out of context. John chapter 3 verses 3 to 8. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born, of, born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Uh, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And then Jesus, answer, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Okay? Notice something here. Notice a distinction made between born of the Spirit and born of the flesh. Okay? Another thing that pagan heretics like Watchman D won't do is he won't compare scripture with scripture. They just rip, they rip obscure verses out of context to prove their, their heresies. Okay? Um, 
Notice how John chapter 3, verse number 3, Jesus is only referring to being spiritually born again. And then John chapter 3, verse 4, a confused Nicodemus thinks that Jesus is speaking about being physically reborn from the womb. And then Jesus explains to him the order of events in John chapter 3, verse 5, being, being physically born of water first, and then being spiritually reborn of the Spirit. Jesus further confirms this by that Basically, he further confirms that being born of water and of the Spirit are two separate births in John chapter 3, verse 6, making a distinction from being born of the flesh and born of the Spirit. Being born of water is referring to physical birth. This is explained in 1 John chapter 5, verse 6. And being born of the Spirit is referring to being spiritually reborn. That's why he says you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is spiritual fellowship with God. According to Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. Again, you can see other scriptures, including Luke chapter 17, verses 20 to 21, 1 Corinthians 4, 20, uh, and it's also, I believe it's, uh, yeah, Romans 14, 17, we covered that, and also John chapter 3, verse 5. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. So in other words, being born of water and born of the spirit are, are not referring to being, are not, are not both referring to being born again. I'll put it that way. There are two separate births. Born of the water is physically born from the flesh. Born of the spirit is being physically reborn. Jesus makes that distinction in context. But you see, a watchman D won't show you that context because it goes against his whole doctrine and it adds to scripture, just like any lost Satanist will, to teach that, oh, this is about being baptism. This is about the pagan practice of being your sins washed away by baptism. Okay? Now, uh, sorry, I'm just panting. I, I did go out for a little jog late at night. I do work the night shift. So I'm up all night, so I go for a late night jogs. But, uh, what thing I go at? But also another common scripture these heretics like to rip out of context is, uh, or like a twist, I'll say it that way, is Acts chapter 22, verse number 16. Let's go there. This is another common scripture twisted to teach the pagan heresy of baptismal regeneration. And it is a pagan practice. Again, I showed that in my video about how it, it, it comes from paganism. The thing of your sins being washed away by water. Acts 22, Acts 22 verse 16, this is another common verse they like to use. Uh, and, now, or, and now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So they'll say, see, you have to get baptized and that washes away your sins. Again, let's actually look at what the verse is saying here, not just rip some phrases and words out of context, okay? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. Okay? The and, notice the and there. It's separating the baptism and the washing away of sins. Okay? Let me elaborate on that. Okay? This is a common verse, like I said earlier, to teach baptismal regeneration. The baptismal regeneration heretics fail to compare scripture with scripture. 1 Corinthians 2.13. Notice the key wording of and, like I mentioned earlier. The verse says, be and be baptized and wash away thy sins, separating the baptism from the washing away of sins. And notice there is no and separating wash away thy sins and the calling on the name of the Lord. Again, it just says, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. There's no and separating the two there. So calling on the name of the Lord, not baptism, is what washes away your sins. Compare Acts 2, 22 16 with Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 13. But for the proof of this, compare Acts 22 16 with Acts uh, 8, 35 to 39. Okay, it's the calling on the name of the Lord that plays the role in washing away your sins, not the baptism. Okay, there's no separation clause of the calling on the name of the Lord and washing away your sins, but there is an and there separating the baptism from the washing away of sins. So again, they, they take these phrases out of context and won't compare a scripture with scripture, just like any lost scripture twisting devil will do. Now, another common verse they like to use is... Um, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. Another verse ripped totally out of context. Let's go there. This is a common one they like to use. And they again, they rip a little phrase in this verse. They, not only do they rip the verse out of context, they rip this little phrase in the verse out of context to prove their pagan heresy of baptismal regeneration. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 21. It says, The like figure whereunto even doth baptism also now save us, not putting away of the filth of the flesh, but an answer, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they look, they home in on the phrase, even doth bapt, even baptism doth also now save us. And it'll say, see, baptism saves you. 
Okay, let's look at the context of what's going on here. Okay, this is what cults always do. Cults, whether it's the Roman Catholic Church, the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, and the Baptism of Regeneration heretics, they will not can look at context or compare scripture with scripture. Okay, uh, let's read from verse uh, verse 20. Uh, which were sometime disobedient, when once long suffering at once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing wherein a few, that is eight souls, were saved by water. Okay. Let's uh give a summary of what's going on here. Something that the pagan because again, Watchman D, he's a lost heretic. He's not he's not saved. So he can't hear the words of the shepherd because he's not part of the fold. He's a child of Satan. So he can't hear God's words because he's not of God. John eight forty seven. So notice how Peter says that there are eight souls saved by water in verse 20. How are they saved by water? Because the boat Noah built kept the float on the water above the destruction down below. Okay, Noah wasn't being saved by water baptism. There was no water baptism back then. Okay, notice how Peter compares water baptism to Noah physically building the boat, which showed Noah's obedience to God in Genesis chapter 6, verses 12, 12 to 22. Peter says that the figure, the like figure unto, so the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Verse 21, which is identified as, quote, the answer of a good conscience towards God, also in verse 21. And Peter goes on to say, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, in verse 21. Peter is simply saying that what Noah did in Genesis chapter 6, verses 12 to 22, is a type, can be seen as a typology of water baptism, and that just as Noah building the ark in Genesis chapter 6, verses 12 to 22, showed his good heart and obedience to God, Getting water baptized shows a good conscience and obedience to God. Again, you know, it's the answer of a, good, of a good conscience towards God. Peter says that in that exact same verse. He's not saying that the physical act of baptism literally washes us from sins and saves us from hell. The doctrine of water washing away sins is straight out of, out of Catholic paganism, which they borrowed from the Greek Roman pagans, Hindu pagans, Aztec pagans, and other heathen antiquities. That's all he's saying there. He's just simply saying, it just shows your obedience towards God, a good conscience towards God. That's what it's saying in context. It's not saying that water literally washes away your sins. Never in the Old or New Testament did water pertain to salvation of the soul. And a good proof of this, a good, a good quick little proof of this, is just simply compare, let me just pull out my notes. And if I watch him, he attacked me, he said, oh, why do you need your notes? Uh, because I can't remember things very well. I don't have a good memory. Okay, that's why I write things down. You know, he's just nitpicking at what I'm doing. But uh, for further proof of this, compare First Kings or Second Kings chapter five verses ten to fourteen with First Peter chapter three verses twenty to twenty to twenty one. Compare the two, and you'll see that never in the Old or New Testament does immersion in water or water in general have anything to do with salvation from the, of the soul. It's ridiculous how they just twist scripture like crazy to prove. There are pagan heresies. Now, a good scripture to totally refute baptismal regeneration, which Watchman D really has to kind of tiptoe around and just try to contort to make his heresy work, is Acts chapter 10, verses 43 to 48, where the Gentiles receive the Holy Ghost before they get baptized. Okay? And baptismal regenerations will try to twist this and try to get around this any way they can, but it doesn't change the fact that they were receiving, they were receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost before they got baptized. What about the thief on the cross in Luke 23? He never got baptized, and yet he was still saved. And, and his little heretic watchman D comes out and says, "Oh, well, he's not the standard for um, he's not the standard for Christians or whatever." Why? Because he can't deal with the fact that he got saved without getting baptized. It's that simple. They have they have to just tiptoe around scriptures that refute their whole point. But let's turn to Acts chapter ten, verses forty three to forty eight. Let's go there. Oops, the sound went off. Acts ten. Let me just make sure I'm full screen. There we go. Acts 10, verses 43 to 48. And to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive the mission of remission of sins unless they're baptized. Oh, wait, it doesn't say that. Whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. No baptism. Uh, verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. What's the word? The word of God, the gospel in that context. And they had the circumcision, which believe were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
And they heard them speaking with tongues and magnify God. They answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as as well as, well as we? Sorry, not good at reading on a computer. And he com commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed that they him to tarry certain days. Okay, what do you have here? They're receiving, but they're receiving the Holy Ghost and believing the Word and getting saved before baptism. Okay, they can't answer this. They have to just twist it and, and contort it to make their heresy work. Okay, baptism regeneration is a wicked pagan doctrine, and it's it, the reason why it's so satanic is because it puts the keys that the keys of salvation, you know, keys of salvation, so to say, in the hands of a man. Because if that preacher does not baptize you, you can't be saved. Regardless of the fact that you believe the gospel, you put your trust in the gospel, if that preacher decides not to baptize you, you can't be saved. So it, it rips salvation right out of God's hands and puts it in the hands of, of a man, a preacher. That's why it's satanic. That's why it's a Roman Catholic doctrine. Because it gives man the control of your salvation, not God. Okay, let me show you another scripture about that. Because a preacher does not provide you salvation by baptism. And again, that's why it's satanic. Because it rips salvation out of the control of God and puts it in the hand of a man. Uh, John chapter 10, verses 27 to 29. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall, look at this, never perish. Okay, Jesus Christ gives you eternal life, and you'll never perish. Your future whole heresy, your pagan uh, Catholic heresy of conditional security, or Catholic Calvinist heresy of conditional security. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Jesus Christ is who gives you eternal life, not some preacher who wants to baptize you. And when he gives you eternal life, you will never perish. It's that simple. So, Mark and Avoid, the heretic, watch me. We're coming out with more stuff on him in the future. And again, if someone gets offended and someone doesn't like this, I really don't care. Because, you know what? There's nothing scripturally wrong with, with me marking and warning about this false prophet, this this work salvation devil, okay? This scripture twisting child of Satan. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, Galatians 1, 8 through 9, let him be accursed. Not have a friendly chit chat with them or have fellowship with them. No, let him be accursed. It's that simple. So yeah, mark and avoid this, this lost devil watchman D and pray he gets saved. I do want to see the guy get saved, honestly. You know, I don't wish hell upon anybody. I want to see him get saved. But he's not saved. He's preaching the pagan heresy of baptism and regeneration, and he's preaching the Catholic Calvinist heresy of conditional security. So, mark and avoid him, and don't be deceived by the scripture twisting regarding uh, baptism, and don't be deceived by the scripture twisting devils who want to get you thinking that you have to get immersed in water to be saved. That is pagan heresy. That is wicked. So don't be deceived by him. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren, and I guarantee you he's going to do some response video to this, whatever. I really don't care, you know. Because he's a he's a lost, uh, hellbound sinner, and he can't enter, he can't hear God's words. He has not experienced the new birth. He's still a lost hellbound sinner. He's still lost and dead in his sins. It's that simple. So, and someone gets offended over this, I really don't care. So, anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.